means of buying goods and services. The other asset class is crypto commodities. The way we have commodities in the physical world, like the raw material, in similar way there are crypto commodities and they are the raw material uh, that serves as input just like any other physical raw material. Right? And the examples are computer power, um, can anybody give an example of computer power using as a commodity in the, I know, you know, you know the name but probably you cannot put the classification, that classification. Cloud. Y yes, that's correct. But let me give you some examples of this. The Ethereum, right, it is a computer. It's commodity. The way they say that this is a world computer, right, but it is a commodity. It's not a cryptocurrency. It's a commodity that we can use, just like any other computer. Or there are other assets, for example, storage, file coin. These are ICO. These are the coins that we you can buy today. But their purpose is to be used as a commodity. I give another example. Uh, for example, storage. Right? This is an ICO that came a couple of years ago and you can actually, you can use this token or you can use this commodity to keep your files um, on a blockchain. Not the blockchain, but on the this decentralized uh, network. It's not centralized like Dropbox or Google Drive. It's, it used the blockchain technology to find out, you know, any storage that is hooked into that system. It's a decentralized model of storage system. But the way we can consume is through a digital asset, which is, an, which is a token that you can buy. Right? And same is the, same is the concept with Filecoin. <coughs> Private H is another you can call it commodity for now. But this is this is the concept where you can actually buy the um, the the bandwidth right? using using these tokens. You you can buy the bandwidth on the internet, right? If I have a system and I have a surplus bandwidth, how can I sell it? Right? So this is the model based on the decentralization and based on the blockchain and now they have commoditized it and you can buy it, sell it. So it is another type of commodity. Right? So, so again the, the, the point is when we get into this crypto digital world, how do we look at the assets? Right? When we, even from the investment point of view, we should know what type of it's we want to invest, right? If we want to make our career in that, either in business or in IT, we should know what type of assets we are dealing with, right? So this is the second classification of the assets. And then we have the the finished products, right? Now we can call them crypto tokens. Examples are digital goods and services. For example, I think many of in this room know about this crypto kitties. So it's a finished product. Right? That it's not a commodity, but it's a finished product. Another example is the the steam. Right? If you use this token, you can you can um, use it for as a reward for the for using the the uh, music, right? So this is the end product, 
of the whole um, product life cycle. Right. Another example is tokenized real estate. So there was in the news just a couple of days ago that Ethereum has tokenized um, about like 15, 17 um, floor building that has apartments. It's about 30, 40 million dollars tokenized. But you can actually buy those assets which are based on the blockchain technology. Right. So those are finished products that you can buy. Right. So the the idea is that okay, we can classify these, and we should really understand when we get into the digital or the crypto world what these assets are. So now, a little bit more information about the the money itself. Right. So we know that there are different types of money. There is a currency. Right, and well, there are different forms of money. The one one is the currency, right? And how the the whole concept of money and the world value is evolving, right? And how the digital world is changing all this. Let's have a look at that. So this is the this is the concept which I really like to talk about. Um, these are the different types of money that we have used in past. Right? The, the barter system, the metals, the paper, right? All that there's in the physical world. There's nothing digital about it. Even then the card. So at the, at the top of the flow you see the cryptocurrencies that we call it the digital currency today right but what it really means when when we say some something is a digital currency what exactly that mean right so we we, we we understand that what these are paper plastic the uh, you know the note that we use what does that what are these forms of money or the value is, let's say for example gold, right, it's a metal, but where the value comes for that gold, who decides what the value is, right, it's everybody, and we all decide how much a particular amount of gold is worth of, right, the way I understood or the, the, uh, the article that I was reading, the writer was saying that this is our collective hallucination, right? Where the value of gold comes from, where the value of diamond comes from, right? We put that value on it, right? So when we say something digital, where the value stays, there's nothing. This physical. If it's a true in a true form, if it's a digital then where is the value? We can say that paper is at $10, we know its value is $10 and it's a physical thing that we, we can we know and see that. But where is the value when we talk about a digital asset or let's say currency for the Bitcoin or any other currency. So what it means is, and this is, really we need to understand this. Now we are saying that any value that we assign, it is assigned to a digital string, a string of characters that has value, right? And what else the digital can mean other than a string of characters? What is it? That's what it is, right? So when we are saying that something digital has value, that means a string of characters, it has a value. The way gold had value, the way silver had value, the way paper had the value, right? In a similar way, now we are into the digital world and 
a string of characters. It has some value, and I can transfer that value. We can call that value as a Bitcoin. We can call that value as any other currency. But in the end, what it this is what it means. That somehow we have a very unique set of characters. Right? And somehow we assign value to it. I can say that it it has a value of ten dollars. <coughs> And I can transfer it. And the reason why we are moving from a physical value system to a digital value system is because, let's look at some examples. Right? Um, we all know that before the digital phones that we are using, we had how how we are using the the um, the the voice or the sound those were not digitized right and now the the sound and the voice it has been digitized now can we imagine how much the sound and the and the voice has so many uses, it has become so accessible. We can change it, we can transfer it through the data lines, right? And we can do so much with the sound once we transfer it into a digital format. So let's compare, right? Having something in a physical and to convert it totally into a digital world, it signifies its usability in many, many, many folds, right? And I would like to explain you this through this another slide. That while when we are making something based on the cryptos or in a general sense we call it digital, right? Why that is going to work, right? I give you some example that Let's, let's take a look, look at some more examples. And the concept which I read about is called... The concept is called infrastructure inversion. It's a really beautiful concept. Let's spend some time, a few minutes on understanding this concept. You will be able to appreciate it's much better that when we, word, then we come into the digital world, Right? Either we uh, transform the sound into a digital world, either we transform the, um, you know, anything else or money into a digital world. How does that work? Transformation from non-digital to a digital world. So the first example is the infrastructure of courses, right? And I really like this idea. Um, before, before the cars, we had the horses, right? And horses, they, where they were running, they were running on their own roads. Those roads were built for horses, right? Go back 500 years ago. I don't know, like 200 years ago, when somebody was thinking about inventing a car, what kind of infrastructure they had? Do you think there were roads? There were highways? No. We had the roads built for horses. Right? And the service was to move people from one place to another place. And somebody thought, okay, let's make the car. Right? Now, Somebody has built the car, they don't have any infrastructure to run the car. The best place they could find was the road that was built for horses. And let's say I invented that car and I brought I bring that my car to that road. What will happen to that car? Will it run properly? 
No. Anyone who would look at, at that car, right, and they say, they will say, my horse is much better than your this car. Your car is not reliable. It needs oil. It can break down any time. Cannot take more than like one person, right? And it has these wheels. They can break any time. I don't want to use it. I am good with my horse. All I want is a healthy horse, right? And that was true at that time. What happened was, we had an invention of the car, but there was no infrastructure to run the car. And we tried our best to use that invention on that infrastructure. And it worked sometime, it didn't work sometime, but what happened in the end? Cars, they brought their own infrastructure. Right? We end up building the the roads, 